Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And I was in Stockholm last week watching Avengers Endgame two days early and also dorking out to Taylor Swift's new single. Notice the hat? This is Taylor Swift merch. You can't spell awesome without me. Okay, but I did miss doing this show, and so I'm super psyched to be back with the latest developer news, and this week, we've got a lot of it. Okay, so first up, final reminder that Microsoft Build 2019 is next week. And so this is our annual developers conference, and it's going to be at the Washington State Convention Center from May 6th through 8th, 2019. And I'll be there along with all your Channel 9 favorites. And like we've done in years past, we will be live streaming special talks, interviews, and demos from the conference in between our live streams of some of the various sessions. So if you can't be there in person, be sure to tune in to Build Live. Now, I'm going to do my best to do a special Build edition of TWC 9 next week, but no promises because, like I said, I'm going to be running, ar running around hosting a slew of Build Live content, but I really do want to try to do this because I know that there's going to be a ton of new stuff to show off and talk about. Also, if you see me at Microsoft Build, be sure to say hello. I love meeting people that watch our content. And I also want to give a quick plug for Microsoft Create Startups Tour. This is a great opportunity for startups of all sizes to learn about scaling their startups, both from a code and from a business perspective. And dates and cities are linked down below. And I also want to give uh, a shout out because the final stop of the 2018 to 2019 edition of Microsoft Ignite, the tour, is coming up on May 22nd in Mumbai. And I'll be there, and it's my first trip to India, so if you see me there, please say hello. Okay, so now that the event stuff is out of the way, it's time to geek out over some massive news that the Visual Studio Code team dropped on Thursday. So Visual Studio Code is awesome, and I don't need to tell any of you that. It's seriously my favorite text editor, and I actually used it to write this script that I'm reading right now. But anyway, sometimes you want to be able to use Visual Studio Code when you're working on a remote virtual machine or a container or even within WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And the challenge was that until now, if you wanted to do that, your options were sometimes messy, sometimes laggy, and sometimes not even really feasible. And so the Visual Studio Code team has announced the preview of three new VS Code extensions that will allow for remote editing via WSL, containers, or SSH. And I'll give a personal example that I dealt with just last week. So I was using my Windows laptop, and yes, I do sometimes use Windows, and I was working on a Node project that I'm toying around with. And for this, I wanted to use WSL because the Linux toolchain is better adept at doing what I wanted to do. But the problem was I also wanted to use Visual Studio Code. And although I could load up some of the code remotely in Windows, I couldn't use the native Linux toolchain stuff in my editor. So my alternative was to install VS Code inside WSL, and then I had to use a third-party X server to launch a separate version of code that way. But then there are issues with high DPI support, and then there's unnecessary lag with loading another version of my code editor in an environment inside of another environment. Pain, right? And so this new extension will solve all of that, and that is awesome. And this is also really great for anybody who might have a really powerful remote VM or a workstation for running lots of code. So I'm looking at you AI and ML folks who have previously been forced to use Vim to edit their code via SSH. The horror. Okay, so right now these extensions, which you can install individually or as a pack, only work with the insider's release of Visual Studio Code. But Support will be coming to the stable version soon. And my good friend Brian Kettleson, who has been using various workarounds for remote VS Code stuff for ages, has a really great blog post highlighting some of how this works. And he also did a Twitch stream showing it off. And I'm going to link to both of those in the show notes down below. And the code team also has fantastic documentation for how to get started using all three methods and videos showing all this stuff um, off as well. And so I've also linked to all of that down below too. Bottom line, this is massive news, and I'm seriously so, so, so excited about this release. Next up, in some GitHub news, GitHub just announced that the new GitHub Learning Lab will now be accepting community-authored courses. And so Learning Lab launched about a year ago as a way for GitHub users to level up their own skills without having to leave GitHub. And now the community can create and submit their own courses so that others can learn too. And so there's a video series, documentation, and even a Learning Lab course to show you how to get started. And all of those are linked down below. And I also kind of want to use this as a chance to plug my 
Microsoft Learn, which is another learning platform for anybody who's interested in learning more about Azure-related resources. It's different from GitHub's Learning Lab, but I did want to give it a plug anyway, just because, I mean, it's great. Learning's fun. We love it. DockerCon 2019 is taking place this week, and the .NET team released an update about how .NET Core and Docker have been working together. And so some of the changes with .NET Core 3.0, which the team says is the first release with substantive runtime changes uh, that are, have been made to work with Core CLR to make it more efficient, to honor Docker resource limits better by default, and to offer more configuration uh, for users to tweak. So this is all really good stuff. And I've got a link to uh, Rich Lander's blog post out outlining how all of this is uh, working in the show notes down below. But this is really great stuff for anybody who does things with both .NET and with Docker. And speaking of Docker, my friend Chris Noring has a really great post over on Dev.2 that's a crash course of the most important Docker concepts and their commands. And this post is great, too, because it also links to some of the other Docker stuff that Chris has been writing about, uh, many of which we've actually talked about before. So Microsoft Build is next week, and there are tons and tons of sessions and breakouts and talks to attend, like there are over 400 of them. It's nuts. Um, so Inbar over at OzCode put together a list of five build sessions that the OzCode team is psyched for. And so I've linked to it down below. Uh, so if you're looking for some suggestions of what to attend, the OzCode team has some options. A cool update for Microsoft Edge insiders on the Dev and Canary builds in Windows. Uh, the team has made a change um, into how um, you install web apps. Uh, and so now it'll be at the top level of your start menu. And this is actually one of my favorite features of the new Microsoft Edge is that you can easily install PWAs or progressive web apps. Um, and this change is really great because it just adds it to the start menu like a full program. In some awesome PowerShell news, the public preview of PowerShell in Azure Functions 2.x is out now. And so this means that you can build your PowerShell functions in Azure Functions. Fun. And I've also got a link uh, to the PowerShell team's blog post outlining what's new, what's working, what's not. And I've also linked to a blog post that shows off uh, serverless automation using PowerShell preview in Azure Functions and an Azure Friday video with Scott Hanselman on the same topic. Speaking of Scott Hanselman, who's everybody's favorite developer, he has a great post on his blog about using the Azure IoT MX chip dev kit to solve a problem he had to try to figure out if he'd left his garage door open or not. Way to flex, Scott. You have a garage. Some of us just live in high-rise buildings with shared parking and garage doors that break with impunity and then leave our vehicles trapped inside all day. And this is why I don't drive. I kid, I kid, but seriously, uh, links to Scott's blog uh, are, are down below. It's a very cool project. On Channel 9 this week, we've got lots of great content, including an episode of the Open Source Show that's all about Go modules, so check that out. And on the IoT Show, the Azure IoT team is getting ready for Microsoft Build 2019. And who isn't? We're all so excited about Build. All right, and now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay. So part of me just wanted to make the Avengers Endgame, which if you haven't seen it already, see it, wouldn't make that my pick of the week. And then part of me wanted to be a troll and suggest the, the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, but I love you all too much for that. I am actually looking forward to Detective Pokemon though. That, that's not a joke. Okay, but instead, I'm going to go back to my roots. Well, really, Microsoft's roots. Uh, Microsoft Solitaire is one of the greatest games of all time. Fight me. And so, like, seriously, the amount of time that I've spent with that game, which dates back to Windows 3.0 in 1990, is ridiculous. In high school, seriously, this is a true story, I used to get in trouble uh, for playing Solitaire instead of writing my English papers. But, like, my English papers were finished, so why not just play the game? I even subscribed to the iOS version of the game, and like this was before I joined Microsoft. Anyway, Microsoft Solitaire is a 2019 inductee into the World Video Game Hall of Fame, and so that's great. And the other inductees this year include two of my favorite games from fourth and fifth grade, Super Mario Kart and Mortal Kombat. Now, I've always been a little more partial to Mortal Kombat 2 because the Super Nintendo version actually had blood instead of sweat but the OG game is uh, legit great as well. But like, let's just be real, uh, with the exception of Tetris, I don't think that any other game is responsible for as much lost productivity as Microsoft Solitaire. And for that, 
I am so thankful. So let me know your memories of Solitaire and uh, your fastest solve times in the comments down below. And feel free to comment on any of the other stories we discussed too. And if you like this video, please give it a like on YouTube. It helps our rankings and keeps me making videos. And uh, consider subscribing to the Microsoft Developer uh, channel on YouTube where you'll get all of your nerdy tech goodness. And I do want to point out that we will be putting out the Microsoft Build 2019 videos on this channel in a special playlist. So if you're not able to be at Build, we will still have you covered. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.